How's it going everyone, Michael here. So today we're gonna go over the algorithm problem, compare version numbers. This problem involves the use of a two-pointer algorithm and it's asked by Amazon, Microsoft, and Salesforce. So let's dive into it. So for this problem, we're given two version number strings, version one and version two, and we have to determine if version one is less than, greater than, or equal to version two. So if version one is less than version two, we're gonna return negative one. If version one is greater than version two, we return one. And then if they're equal, we return zero. So first let's define what valid version numbers are. Valid version numbers must contain at least one character and they consist of only digits and periods. So here are some examples of valid version numbers. Notice that all of the examples contain characters that are either digits or periods. Each section between the periods are called revisions and there can be zero or more revisions. So let's walk through the first example to go over this algorithm. We have version one string as 1.13.2.0 and version two string of 1.13.0. 0.00201. In this specific example, version one would be less than version two. And we know this because if we look at the revisions from left to right, starting at the a very zeroth revision, both of these version strings have one. So those are the same. So we go to the next revision. Now we're looking at 13. Those are the same. But then when we look at the the next revision between both version strings, we have two and zero, 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 two, zero, one. But we can just drop leading zeros and 201 is greater than two. So that's how we know version two is actually greater than version one. So what does this look like in terms of an algorithm? Like I mentioned before, we're gonna be doing a two-pointer approach. So first what we're gonna do is split our strings based on the periods in the string. So version one will become the following and version two will become the following. And then we're gonna have one pointer, pointer I, start at index zero of the version one array and another Another pointer j start at index 0 of the version 2 array. Starting at index 0 for both of our pointers, if we convert these strings to integers, 1 would be equal to 1, and those are the same, so we're going to go ahead and look at the next revision. So we're going to move both of our pointers forward. Once again, we convert this revision to strings, 13 equals to 13, so we're going to move our pointers forward again, and then we get to the string 2 and the string 000201, and when we convert those, we're going to get 2 that is not equal to 201. Converting string to integers, at least in Java, will actually strip out any leading zeros for us. This is useful to point out in an interview because it shows you have a good understanding of the standard library in your language of choice. So since this specific revision, are they're not equal, we know version one must be less than version two, and we can just return one. Notice we don't have to continue checking any other revisions because the higher revisions are left most while the lower revisions are rightmost in the strings. Let's go over one more example for this algorithm, but this time one of the version strings is not going to have any periods. So version 1 is equal to 1, and then we have version 2 equal to 1.00, and then a bunch of other zeros. So version 2 has all zeros from revision 1 and onward. So version 2 is technically just equal to 1, but let's go through the algorithm. Starting our pointers at index zero. When we convert these strings to integers, one is equal to one, so we move forward. Now we are at a point where our I pointer is no longer looking at a valid index. So what we can do is say if our index is not valid, just default the number to zero. The reason why we can do this is because zero is the same thing as the revision not being there. So just as an example, if we had a version string of one and then a version string of 1.0, these are exactly the same. So after converting the string in version two, we get zero equal to zero and we move forward. And we're gonna do the same things for revision two and revision three. 
that's just going to be 0 is equal to 0. And we know the two version strings are the same when both of the pointers are no longer pointing to a valid index. So for this specific example, our version 1 and version 2 string are the same, so we're going to return 0. All right, so let's go over the code for this solution. We are given two strings, version 1 and version 2, and we have to return an integer, pretty much just determining if version 1 is less than, greater than, or equal to version 2. So first, we need to split by our periods inside of the strings. So what is this doing? Why do we do backslash backslash period? We have to actually escape the period because a period is used in regex expressions. So if you just do a period on its own, it won't work. If we escape the period, we're pretty much saying we want to split our version strings by the actual period character. And that's what we want. So now that we've done this, we've essentially broken up our version strings by all of the revisions, which that's what we want to do because we're going to be running a two pointer algorithm. Next, let's just extract the lengths of these arrays. We're going to say int m is equal to v1 section dot length and n is equal to v2 section dot length. And then we want to initialize our i and j pointers. We're going to say i is equal to zero and j is equal to zero. And now this is where we're going to run our two pointer algorithm. So we're going to be doing a while loop, but what should our conditionals be? So remember that each version string may not have the same number of revisions, but that doesn't mean we want to stop comparing. So what we can do here is we're going to say while i is less than m or j is less than n, because we want to continue as long as each pointer has more to check. And so now inside of here, we are going to actually start performing the conversions from strings to integers. But we're going to have to make sure to check that each pointer is actually looking at a valid index. So that's just an edge case we have to consider. So we can come in here and we can say int v1. And if i is less than m, then that means we're looking at a valid index and we can convert this revision to an integer. So we can just say integer dot parse int and we're going to say v1 section at pointer i. If we're not looking at a valid index, then we just default it to zero. And then we're going to do the same thing for v2. We're going to say if j is less than n, then we're going to do integer dot parse int v2 section of pointer j, otherwise default it to zero. And now what we want to do is just compare version one and version two. So if version one and version two are not the same, we need to determine if v1 is less than or greater than v2. So this is pretty simple. We can just say if v1 is not equal to v2, then we're going to say return if v1 is less than v2, then return negative one, otherwise return one. So line nine handles the case where it's greater than or less than. If we make it out of this while loop, this is where we're going to say, oh, the version strings are equal, so we return zero. Now there's one last thing we need to do here. We need to increase our pointers. So what we can do is we say if i is less than m, if we're still looking at a valid index, then just increase our i pointer. And then if j is less than n, then increase our j pointer. All right, so let's submit to make sure it works. So our time complexity is going to be big O of m plus n, linear time, where m is the length of version 1 and n is the length of version 2. We have to break up the version strings in the beginning of the function, which is where this time complexity comes from. The actual while loop is big O of the max between m and n, but we actually just drop this part entirely. And the reason why is because if we included this while loop time complexity, it would either be big O of 2 times m plus n or big O of m plus 2 times n, but 
we would just drop the constant so it's still big O of m plus n. Our space complexity is also going to be big O of m plus n, linear space, and this comes from the arrays that we have to initialize. So that's it for this algorithm tutorial. If you're looking to get some more prep in for your interviews, feel free to check out my public Discord channel. The group has grown a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, it really helps out the channel. I really appreciate all of the support, and I will see you all next time.